serious poetry isn't always the best poetry. Today we're going to look at Where the Sidewalk Ends from Shel Silverstein, two of his poems, and afterwards maybe we'll talk about what makes something absurd and why absurdity is a good thing. Let's start with One Inch Tall. If you were only one inch tall, you'd ride a worm to school. The teardrop of a crying ant would be your swimming pool. A crumb of cake would be a feast and last you seven days at least. A, free would, a flea would be a frightening beast if you were one inch tall. If you were only one inch tall, you'd walk beneath the door and it would take about a month to get down to the store. A bit of fluff would be your bed. You'd swing upon a spider's thread and wear a thimble on your head if you were one inch tall. You'd surf across the kitchen sink upon a stick of gum. You couldn't hug your mama, you'd just have to hug her thumb. You'd run from people's feet in fright to move a pen would take all night. This poem took 14 years to write cause I'm just one inch tall. That's one inch tall and we're gonna skip to, by the way, I love tabs. Do you love tabs? I hope you do. Tabs are awesome. We're going to skip to the planet of Mars. On the planet of Mars, they have clothes just like ours. And they have the same shoes and they have the same laces. And they have the same charms and they have the same graces. And they have the same heads and same faces, but not in the very same places. And then there's a picture, I'm sure you can see it on the screen, of a face in the very wrong place. So what makes something absurd? Okay, I think the tone of absurdity comes from a combination of two things. It comes from being nonsensical, but also nonchalant. So you take something that's physically impossible and you treat it like an ordinary occurrence. That's the key to an absurdist poem. And that's what Shel Silverstein does so well, is he takes these uh, these completely impossible ideas, like being one inch tall, and, or, you know, faces coming out your you-know-what, and he doesn't treat them like absurd ideas. He treats them like any old Tuesday. Why does that provide value? What makes uh, that sort of a legitimate vehicle for poetry? The first way it provides value is that it's just fun. Like there's something enjoyable and escapist about uh, part participating in the absurd, or maybe we should say indulging in the absurd. Uh, it's kind of fun to imagine ourselves as one inch tall, or again with faces coming out of places where they shouldn't be. But another important thing is that it it holds up a mirror, and it may just be a funhouse mirror or a wonky mirror, but it is a mirror nonetheless. By thinking about ourselves, if we were one inch tall, we reflect on how important size is. And by thinking about where our faces are not, we are forced to think about anatomy and forced to think about how different life would be if our anatomy was a little different. So by, by being patently impossible, but by being treated as patently obvious, it forces us to see the world in a new way and to and reflect in a new way and to engage in a new way. Whereas if our faces were where they were supposed to be in a poem, we wouldn't ever take the time to contemplate on just how it changes life that our face is where it is. So the sort of sweet innocence of absurdity uh, allows for a deep, deep insight into the way the world is the sweet innocence of assuming that this untruth is true allows us to really look at what is true. So hope you enjoyed Shel Silverstein's Where the Sidewalk Ends. There's a lot more absurd poems here, so pick up, pick up a copy. Always please follow me on Substack from beauty to truth.com and you can subscribe here on YouTube as well. Thank you.